Hey everybody, welcome to a new video in which we will uh, create uh, some triangles and orient them toward the mouse. So let's take a look at these visuals. So this is a patch that I created uh, last day that uh, basically has a particle system and every particle is transformed into a triangle. And then these triangles are oriented uh, toward their velocity. So they are oriented toward their direction, basically. And their direction is to point toward the mouse. So basically they will uh, always point, uh, they will always try to point toward the mouse. And this is made with uh, simple particle physics, really simple. And to orient them, uh, actually, we can use two, um, two ways. We can either use the dot product or we can use the atan2. So this is a function that gives us, uh, uh, this gives us the angle between a point in the, uh, in the two-dimensional space and the x-axis. But let's start, uh, let's start from scratch. So let me close this patch here and let's create a new patch. And we will start from scratch. We will not create the particle system mechanics. We will just create the triangles and a way to orient them uh, toward a point that we want. Okay, so I think you can find this interesting. Let's see. First of all, let's create a JIT, G, uh, JIT world and a JIT camera. And let's take a look at that. So we have uh, the JIT world with a name that is game, it can be whatever. This is the name of our GL context. Uh, uh, full scale anti aliasing size, window position, floating, erase color to black, no menu bar when we go full screen, and FPS. Let's actually make 120. Uh, but anyway, if you have the, the if your screen has a maximum refresh rate of 60, in order to have uh, a FPS that is greater than uh, 60, then you will have to set the attribute sync to zero. This will allow you to go to FPS beyond the refresh rate of your screen. Just a side note to that. Let's actually go back to 120. Okay, boom. I actually like my sync because my screen has a refresh rate of 120, so I can set the sync. I can leave the sync to one. Okay, so uh, one thing that we need to do also is, uh, since we are working in, in a two-dimensional world, world in this tutorial, let's set actually the attribute orthogonal to our camera. Uh, so basically we will work only without the zeta axis, but uh, we will still consider the lens angle. So with ortho one, we work without the zeta axis. So in an orthographic projection, but we still use the lens angle. Okay, while if we use ortho two, then no lens angle, but we want the lens angle because this is somehow important for um, for how the screen coordinates are calculated from the mouse. So ortho one. Okay, uh, then what actually? Let's create actually some uh, some some little messages that will allow us to get some information about the position of our mouse on the window. So first of all, we want to send to the to the window. When we start the patch, we want to send to the window the message idle mouse one. Is this the right message? Yeah. Okay. Let me see. So this will allow us to get the mouse coordinates in pixel uh, in pixels. Uh, of where our mouse is inside our window. So this is what this message does. Is a command that we issue to uh, the inside the window that is inside Jit World. So let's create actually a root object. Uh, this is the message that we get is mouse idle actually. And then when our mouse goes outside from the window, we receive the message mouse idle out. But we are only interested in the coordinates of the mouse inside our window. So, boom, 
uh, with that we get the coordinates of the mouse in pixels. So this will be the coordinate 0, 0, and this will be the coordinate sides uh, minus 1, sides minus 1, I suppose. Okay, and then uh, actually we need to send these coordinates. We need to send these coordinates in pixels to the message uh, uh, screen to world. So we need to send a message screen to world to our um, underlying uh, render. Send the render. No, send render. So we need to send the message screen to world to our render inside the JIT world in order to get the position in world coordinates. And since we are not using the z-axis, this will correspond exactly to the positions uh, in the world exactly at z0, let's say. So in order to get these coordinates, let's receive here the mouse pixels. And let's see what we get out of here. So screen to world, we get the coordinates in screen to in world coordinates. So let's root here the screen to world message. And this will give us the coordinates in world coordinates. So we are basically are sending the coordinates of the mouse first uh, to this message here that converts them into world coordinates and then we get the world coordinates outside of this second outlet. Good. We will need these world coordinates to do some stuff. So now that we have our screen coordinates, let's actually create uh, a JIT noise which we will use to position our particles uh, in uh, the, the two-dimensional world. Uh, we still need to create three vertices, uh, we, need, we still need to create a three-plane matrix because I also want to use uh, uh, the data from the GGen to compute some colors. So we need at least uh, three planes to uh, to compute the air, red, green and blue colors. Okay, so we still, we could have had uh, a two-plane matrix uh, because we are just using X and Y, but uh, since I want also to use color, let's actually create a three-plane matrix. Then let's create a float 32 and let's say we want 100 of these uh, uh, these points. Let's create a bank. So now since we want to create a triangle from every single point, we need uh, another matrix that is three times the size of this cheat noise. Let me actually make a little drawing. So this is our cell. That's another cell. That's another cell of our cheat noise matrix. And from every cell, since we want to create a triangle from every from every point inside the JIT noise, we want to have uh, three other cells. So this means that we will need this means that we will need a matrix that is three times the size of the original matrix. So we need a JIT matrix, also three float thirty two uh, sides three hundred, and also adapt zero and interp. 0. Now the only problem with that is that I got a bug. So if I create a, a matrix that is exactly three times the size of this uh, of this other matrix, you can see that at a certain point, let me zoom in, you can see that at a certain point these two matrices don't uh, are uh, aligned anymore here for example you will see that this matrix at a certain point will not be aligned anymore. So actually to solve this problem, we have to create a matrix, at least on Windows, Windows 10, we have to create a matrix that is one cell less than uh, uh, what we want, which will not exactly solve the problem, but at least doesn't uh, go anymore in the way of our algorithm. So. We need to create a matrix that is uh, three times minus one uh, the same dimensions. Okay, okay, and then let's now see the algorithm inside JITGen to create triangles from points. So let's create a JITGen title triangles generator. Okay, 
So let's also create a GGL mesh, because this is the object that we will use to uh, render our triangles. And of course, you want the draw mode set to triangles. Okay, and this is the input, our vertex position. So let's go inside. Let's go inside JIT Gen. So first thing we want to do is to use uh, our input and we actually want to switch the X and the Y because uh, we want to switch the, the X and the Y uh, because we are using just them and not the Z as we said before. So we just want to create a vector from, uh, from these two uh, coordinates with the Z set to zero. So for every cell that comes inside will be repeated three times the same. So from let's take a look actually with G cell block. Every cell that is inside is JIT noix when passed to this matrix that is uh, three times the size minus one will be actually every cell will be triplicated. So the first cell 033 will be triplicated, 078 will be triplicated and so on. Okay, so we will use this number that comes inside as the center of our triangle and uh, uh, on all these three cells uh, that comes inside and are exactly the same, we will have a three different output actually. So uh, first of all, let's create a parameter called size. So this will be the size of our triangle, basically of the side of our triangles. And we have to do something like that. We have to create, for example, for the first vertex of our triangle. Let me create uh, another drawing. So we'll use the, the in one as the center of our triangle. And then we have to compute starting from here. We have to compute the vertices in this order starting from the point that we get inside our, uh, our cheat gen. This is nothing here. So let's start with this vertex here. This is basically our center a bit on the back and a bit up on the Y axis. So basically what we have to do is to subtract a bit on the X axis. So we can subtract the value of our sides from the X axis. We'll use that as the X value for our first vertex. Then we need an Y value. So basically we have to sum the Y of our input to our sides parameter. And the Z of course we need to zero because we don't care. Okay, now if we output that, we will basically have the same value for every, every vertex. Basically it cannot draw triangles from this because this is just a single vertex. So, uh, let's create actually, this is vertex 1, let's create actually vertex 2. To create vertex 2, so basically this vertex here, we need uh, um, the x value summed to, to our sides parameter. We need to sum our x value to our sides parameter. Like this, we can actually use the, uh, no, we have to do it. So this x value sum to the sides parameter and then the y is actually good as uh, as it is because we don't need to we don't need to sum it to anything because it's the same y of our center position. Okay, let's actually now create the vertex number three, which will be basically it will have the same x uh, as vertex number one. But uh, to the Y, we actually this time have to subtract our sides parameter, our sides value. Okay. Okay. And now we have to find a way to alternate uh, these three vertices for every cell that come inside, every three cells that come inside, we want to output first one, then the second, and then the third. And we can do that by using the cell object which will give us the coordinates uh, in integers of our matrix. So it will go from zero to the sides of the matrix minus one. And we can use the modulo three operator. So we will get out of that zero, one, two, zero, one, two, zero, one, two for every, uh, for every cell that comes inside. And then if we use a selector object, 
which looks like uh, works like the switch object basically in Max. It will give us uh, when a one comes inside, it will give us the first input. When uh, a two comes inside, it will give the third the, the third input. And when a three comes inside, it will give us the four input. So we just need to sum one to the modulo operator output. And this will basically already should create a triangle. Let's try. Yes. So we have got our triangles here. We created from a single point triangles. Okay. Let's uh, let's actually uh, now add the color to our triangles. Let me close that. Let's actually add a color to our triangles. We can use the still again the selector object to give uh, a value to the two vertices uh, and uh, a third value to our, let's say, our uh, vertex here on the right that will be like the pointing, uh, the pointing uh, vertex of our triangle. So let's give it, for example, a color of blue to these two vertices and a color of, let's say, white to the vertex that we will use as our pointing vertex. So we connect this second output to, to the color array. And uh, as you can see, it didn't give a different color to, to the vertices because it's not interpolating in the from the vertex to the fragment shader that uh, the GL implementation is using is not interpolating. To make it interpolate, we have to give it the attribute smooth shading. Boom. So now it will interpolate the color between the vertices. Okay, kind of cool. Uh, let's actually create a sender here. Uh, let's actually create a sender from our middle output here. So we will continuously bang this matrix and we can work uh, uh, in real time without any time banging the cheat noise here. We can work in real time inside this cheat gen. One thing that I would like to do now is to actually put all these uh, triangles on the wall space of our window. So in order to do that, let's create another cheat gen and let's connect it between the output of cheat noise and the input of this matrix here. Okay. What we want to do to that, uh, here is to transform this range from 0 to 1, uh, that is the normal range from the JIT noise, into minus 1 to 1. So we basically multiply by 2, subtract 1. Let's also switch the X and the Y also here. And we'll recreate a vector. We will recreate a vector of three components with the Z set to 0 from that. So when we bang here, our uh, triangles will cover the not actually not really the whole surface of our window. And you can see that they will uh, also go beyond the vertical edges of our window. So why are they not covering all the window? Because the window, the world coordinates here, when we go full screen, don't go to minus one to one. But they go uh, to minus uh, window ratio to plus window ratio. So basically the window ratio is the x divided by the y, the y, the x sides of our window divided by the y. So we can use inside our JIT gen to, uh, to space the triangles on the whole surface of the window.